Welcome to Charts Today. My name is David Linton and today's edition for Thursday the 27th of August comes to you from London. And uh, we start by looking at the dollar index. We see here we're still bearish on the long and medium term charts. The short term chart we're slightly in bearish territory with these downside targets hanging over us. And uh, bond yields is really the major reason for this and we'll take a look at uh, bond yields uh, in a moment. But the interesting thing is we're still bearish on the dollar uh, with these downside targets hanging over. Remember this is my weekly, my daily and my 60 minute chart, long term, medium term and short term view of the market with the corresponding point and figure targets. So this here is the 60 minute chart, the shorter term targets. So still downward pressure on the dollar. And we're seeing generally uh, a bit of red on the screen. So it is just uh, showing a, a, a mixed market overall. Uh, and of course the euro is looking better against the dollar, uh, against that weaker dollar. And we've got four upside targets here on the shorter term chart. So so um, anywhere from uh, one one to uh, one point two uh, two point five percent higher. So um, euro looking stronger against that weaker dollar. Sterling um, holding at one thirty two. Um, so the UK pound is looking pretty strong despite uh, weak um, uh, data yesterday from uh, the UK. Uh, the pound is uh, still bullish against that weaker dollar. And having made a long term transition above the cloud uh, for the first time in a couple of years. So sterling really looking at its strongest ever since the euro vote um, against the dollar. Uh, against the euro, sterling is also looking a bit stronger, uh, sitting at uh, 111.78 this morning. So that's uh, the strongest we've seen for uh, a good few months. Uh, we haven't seen these levels since June. So um, sterling looking quite strong there as well. Uh, taking a look at Bitcoin, we're sitting at 11,000. $1,378 this morning. Not much change. We're still bearish on the short term chart, bullish medium and long term. But of course, we need really to make new highs to be strong from a technical perspective. We've got targets in both directions on the shorter term chart. Um, the long term chart, we do have upside targets. The S&P 500 index pushed ahead further last night. It was up 1%. Uh, so we've seen now this this gap away for the week. This is the weekly candle here. Uh, of course, we're only three days into that uh, candle. All the rest represent five days. Uh, but we are breaking higher now, making new all-time highs. So uh, the stock market uh, recovery is really assured with that uh, new high. And of course, the Nasdaq made a new high way back in uh, uh, June and uh, has continued to power ahead as well, outperforming the market. And the Dow is up 0.3% also higher, uh, but nowhere near a new all time high yet on this chart. The futures this morning, the S&P futures down 0.2% and the Nasdaq E-mini is down about the same amount. Uh, this is morning time London, of course. So it does suggest that the US market will open uh, lower today, only slightly lower, it's not big moves there. And watch that throughout the morning to get a, a heads up on which way the, the market will open. The VIX volatility is sitting at uh, 23. Uh, its steady decline has uh, given some uh, respite for fears in the market. We have seen a little bit of a kick up uh, yesterday and so the VIX has just kicked up from a, the low 20s to around 23.20 so uh, just a little bit of a temporary kick up there but nothing to really worry stocks. In the UK the FTSE uh, 100 future is down 0.2% this morning. The DAX is down very slightly uh, and the CAC Courant is down 0.2%. So we're just seeing European markets opening slightly lower um, and so that's, that's key. We're seeing some results coming out, poor results out from Rolls-Royce in the UK for example today. The um the Japanese market was down half a percent overnight. That's still holding on to its short and medium term bullish position and is turning long term bullish through the cloud there. So Japan is looking better than it has done for quite some time. And the Hang Seng uh, was actually down uh, just under one percent, but still holding on to its short term and medium term bullish situation. But the bearish uh, position on the Hang Seng for the long-term chart is still there. The uh, Chinese market was up 0.6% and in India we're up uh, half a percent so looking stronger there just breaking through yet to make a new all-time high of course but breaking through the cloud and looking stronger and the Aussie market was up very slightly as well. Uh, gold sitting at 1942 so it, it was lower yesterday uh, we have recovered a little bit and that's taken us back to bullish above the cloud. Uh, we did get as low as 
was uh, just under 19, well, 1905, 1902. So we really nudged that 1900 level, uh, but the market pushed higher on that, and so we are seeing. Um, some improvement that gives us a new upside target here uh, to 2035 uh, and of course we've got this situation at the moment where if we go higher we activate a target to three thousand dollars if we go lower we activate a downside target to 1600 so uh, really key here what happens to the dollar we need to just wait for the break but uh, for this uh, gold we need to wait for the break but it is looking still very bullish on the long-term chart of course silver sitting at 27.26 this morning um, that's down um, slightly but uh, still on bullish territory on all three time frames. US 10 year yield sitting at 0.69%. They have recovered earlier this week uh, so we are just still uh, at pretty low levels historically and this has really been a major factor in the dollar uh, of course uh, with bond yields much lower for international investors uh, the US bonds are less uh, attractive so there's been withdrawal from there and that has had an impact uh, on US interest rates been low the dollar has been not an attractive currency of course but we are seeing that uh, we're seeing a little bit of an improvement this week here but uh, the key thing is we hold this uh, half percent level. Uh, taking a look at the energy mix now, uh, we look at Brent crude first of all, sitting at 45.65, really has struggled to break heavily away from this uh, 45 level. Sitting at 46, uh, cer certainly um, the Gulf uh, situation at the moment, the Gulf mostly shut down for the storm. Uh, is having an impact just on the fundamentals and uh, a lot of watches of uh, what that will mean for production. But for the moment, uh, there's a lot of oil around and we are still struggling to break that 46 level despite um, production being shut down in the Gulf. And if we look at uh, WTI, we're sitting at $43 here. We do have strong upside targets so there is upward pressure um, but this has mostly been driven by the storm of course but we uh, so for the moment we shouldn't be surprised to see prices rising higher us nat gas conversely has fallen back did hit 255 uh, strong resistance there at 255 had three goes of that over the last few days and struggled to break through so we know there's resistance at that level um, <clears throat> But for the moment, uh, we are still uh, just holding the bullish trend just. We have activated a downside target of 223, but for the moment, uh, it's just holding that level. Keep an eye on this one minute chart. That's going to be critical. Coal is still in the doldrums. It's fallen. Uh, it did find a floor over the last few days, uh, in about $53. Uh, but uh, that's the key at the moment. We are seeing this downside potential to about $51. Um, so watch that as well. Emissions had a very very strong uh, week. We just came off the top yesterday, but we've got model targets to 30 euros. So it does look like carbon prices will go to 30 euros. And if we look at uh, gas prices in Europe this morning, uh, we've got MBP up 0.2%. So that's pushing higher. And TTF, the Dutch front month contract, also pushing higher. We are getting towards the end of the week, of course. And if we look at winter gas, we are holding on to that recovery in gas prices. This is a longer term contract, a little bit clearer. Last of all, a look at German power we're sitting here at 41.50 so that's um, quite key as well so we are just seeing lots of upside targets though so it does look like power prices uh, can push higher that's it for today until tomorrow happy charting see you then